Hello, welcome back to Spider's Web. It's your old two, and I better put the car in gear before I press the accelerator. And it's a roll to me dad. It's a Wednesday afternoon. <coughs> the weather is wet. The sky is grey. The temperature is chilly. It's November after all. <laughs> Halfway through November we are. Um, in fact, rapidly coming up to the end of November. A week on Friday. <coughs> Me and Ali are going watching uh, the Australian Pink Floyd in uh, Preston, courtesy of Scragger. He got the tickets and then realised he wasn't going to be in the country, so he passed me, passed the tickets on to me, um, which was nice of him. And uh, there we are. And then a couple of weeks after that, we're going watching Nightwish in Manchester, and. It, and then at the end of that week, we're going watching Andre Rue in um, what we call it, uh, Liverpool. <clears throat> so uh, we've got a mixed bag of music we're going to see over the next few weeks. <clears throat> oh dear lord! Yes, so we're going to have some fun. <laughs> um, right, so. Monday afternoon, I had a lovely afternoon in the company of uh, Alan Wright, who is the author of the uh, what we call it, uh, Victorian crime series. It's a Victorian crime series set in Wigan. Um, I've enjoyed the books again, courtesy of Scragger. I managed to, well, I first. All right, it first came into my onto my radar um, at a noir event Malcolm Hollingrake organised in Wigan, um, and I told Alan on um, on Monday that when I first heard, well, when I of well, how do I put it? Of all the books that were read that were featured in that noir. His was probably the least likely I would want to read because it was set in Wigan and I, I lived there and I wasn't really too fussed. Um, but, you know, Scragger lent me the book. I read a little bit from the beginning of that book. I thought, you know, this 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 could, um, yeah, this, this isn't too bad actually. So I got him on my Kindle, passed the book back to uh, Scragger and uh, really enjoyed the three books I've read of his. So, um, yeah. It's one of those situations where first impressions don't count for... You know, don't count for anything. I don't know what I was going to say then, but my brain just switched off halfway through the sentence. So, yeah, don't always count on first impressions. They say first impressions mean a lot. Not in that case, no. <coughs> Um, I think I missed out on reading them a little bit earlier because, you know, for, for my first impression of putting me off. You know, it's one of those things. So the, um, so the afternoon went well, even though I did manage to, I forgot a few things. Uh, I usually, when I have a guest in with me, I take, um, <coughs> or what you call it, uh, some seat, black CDs in and record the show. I forgot those, I forgot my headphones. Um, I was flustered all day because I was on my own with him. Alan wasn't feeling too well. She still isn't feeling too well. Well, she's feeling a bit better today, but she's got work to do on her with her daughter team uh, later on, so... That's why she's not with me today. She'll not be coming up with me on a Wednesday afternoon anymore. Well, for the foreseeable future anyway, because of these doTERRA online meet-up thingy-mabobs that uh, we've got planned for her. Um, you know, it's one of those things, you know. Yeah, she calls me dad with me on a when Sunday and a Wednesday, but have to fit in with the schedule um, rather than demanding that they fit in with... Oh, you see, so that's the thing. 
Um, I've got all these BMW driver let me out. How oh, bizarre. <laughs> oh dear. So, uh, yeah. There we go. We did go to D&D last night. Well, I went to D&D last night. We set out both of us to go, but as I say, Ali wasn't feeling too well. She'd been up and down. Um, <clears throat> I thought last night she was coming down with some flu bug or something or other, but today she seems okay it's quite cheerful and, and that so I don't know I think the good long sleep she had has helped her in some respect um yeah so what do we have for the rest of the week well tomorrow um tomorrow or Friday I'm gonna to have to spend time in the flat uh, tidying up and cleaning because um, we've got a games night on Saturday night and it's not being filmed um, the um, you know it's Malcolm Holdbreak is actually coming around to have a game uh, try a few games out with us he seemed to show a little bit of interest while I was uh, talking about gaming so I uh, I invited him around for games night so I'm going to have to <clears throat> get a few bits, you know, get the get the place cleaned up a little bit. Make it look a little bit nicer than it actually is. I'll try to. I mean, okay, you can't make a silk purse out of a pig's ear, but still. When you live in a one-bedroom council flat, surrounded by druggies, alkies and complete mutter brain dead morons. <laughs> you know, there's nothing really you can do about the outside situation, but once you get inside, I want it to look a little bit nicer than it actually is. You know, <clears throat> try your best. You know, cause I've been I've been trying to get out of that place for a while, um, and I'm getting no joy, I'm getting no help whatsoever from the council. Private landlords want too much money for me to be able to move in that I can't afford. Blah de blah de blah de blah de blah. You know how it is. Oh dear, money's too tight to mention and all that sort of thing. Damn you, Mick up now. Um, and <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just going to have to put up with it, I think, for the time being, and hope for the best that something comes my way sooner rather than later. Because it is getting incredibly, incredibly depressing. I'm getting, it's really getting, I'm really, really stressing me out trying to cope living there. I'm on edge every time I go out with Laddie. <clears throat> I can't just sit and relax because I've got noise from all sides. I've got reggae music blasting from the uh, exotic tobacco smoking um, neighbour of mine. And I can't stand reggae and the smell of his exotic tobacco, and I'm not leaving it though, um, <clears throat> is really hideous. And it permeates through everything so I can actually smell it in my flat and I don't smoke anyway it's irritating and I'm saying irritating <coughs> because if I actually said what it was I'd have to use this uh, I'd have to set this uh, video as uh, adults only plus I don't swear that bad so <coughs> so irritating I'm using, uh, what's the word, I'm, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Um, as a grave underestimation. But yeah, and then we've got other people from other flats. I mean, well, it's a three story block of flats. So you've got your ground floor, your first floor, and your second floor, that's it. And we've got idiots in another block who've not only got a dirt bike stored in there but they've also got a quad bike in there and they make no apologies <coughs> for riding round on them like idiots so if you walk in and they actually hit you what do you do? you know, not neither of them are street legal but they're riding them around on the roads Whenever the police come anywhere near, they've gone because they sent the police around on foot. <coughs> There's no. Because I mean, police stations 
only next door, basically, but there you go. I'm sorry I am venting in this video because I feel as though I need to. I'm sorry I feel as though I need to, I'm just, I'm in that mood, I just can't be. <clears throat> you know sometimes they just need to blow off steam. Well, this is one of those times, and I'm sorry for putting you through all this. Um, it's just that I really need to curb myself down and <clears throat> get myself going because my um, what's the word? Motivation levels are very, very low. I'm going to be making an appointment to go back to my doctors to see if they can help out somehow. I've already put back on antidepressants and they don't seem to be helping much. So I have, and I'm going to let them know this, I'm going to uh, increase them, I think, because it's not helping. Especially when you get a form that the council sent out about moving on uh, medical grounds. You fill it in with everything you want them to know, and they turn around and say, no, you, it's not achieved anything this time. But I've got 21 days to um, to contact them to uh, <coughs> try and sort out some form of um, review or appeal for it. I don't know what they want, so I'm going to try and make an appointment with my doctor to see if they can help. Um, at the moment, my voice feels dry. It's just because I'm a little. It's just been throat dry, I just need to read it. <coughs> so, um, it's not bad, I've not really been sleeping. Um, well, I don't really sleep very well anyway, but I've been sleeping even worse over the past few nights. Um, and uh, last night I decided to double up on some of my medication and I slept through from whatever time it was I fell asleep and it was half past 12 when I woke up and I just woke up feeling so groggy uh, now I do quite often double my medication up because sometimes with the pain I need it uh, so it's not as though I'm doing anything um, that the doctors haven't said I can do um, so don't worry about that. I'm not overdosing for the sake of it. I'm just I'm doing what the doctor said I can do. Um, so um, it's just I have a certain level of medication that I take to keep me going throughout the day. Um, but they said if I need to, I can up it. So I can double. So you know, last night I just felt as though I needed to, and it just knocked me out completely and I woke up about half past 12 and I just woke up just feeling wobbly and, and I just didn't feel steady at all so I just lay there in bed playing games on my phone and I thought hey I need, I need a drink <clears throat> got up to put the kettle on looked at the clock it was uh, half past two it's now 20 past three so basically had a quick brew a couple of rounds of toast got dressed and come out you know so <coughs> I think I need a proper drink sit down and a drink and uh, get my throat lubricated and then all should be well um but yeah uh just not living in a very pleasant environment at the moment. It's been getting worse and worse and worse. Thankfully the exotic tobacco smoking reggae fan from the next flat to mine has actually condescended to, um, not condescended, see, there's the word condescended, has decided to turn the um, the volume of his stereo down a little bit so I can't really hear it as bad as I could beforehand um, I mean it used to be that when you went out you could hear the handle on his door rattling along with the, with the, with the volume of the music 
it's no longer like that and I'm no longer hearing it as though it's coming from my bedroom <coughs> but it's still loud enough to disturb everybody not just me that's complained other people have complained the council do absolutely bugger all as usual so it's you're fighting a losing battle with Wigan Council all the time they want you to do all the work for them. Even the caretaker at the flats who comes around has heard the volume of the music, has actually told him to keep the music down. So I think that's probably why he has done. And he's complained about it to the council and they still don't want to do anything. And this guy actually got arrested last year, or was it the year before, for stabbing somebody at the flats. So I'm going to have to go because I've got a phone call. So. Until next time, take care, God bless, and bye for now.